Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to continue our look at Profile Manager and we're going to take a look at the Profile Manager interface together and get an overview of how that works. Now, to get to your Profile Manager interface, you could come down here and click on this item right here that says Open in Safari. You can do that for Profile Manager or for the My Devices screen. Uh, we talked about how to enroll devices in the last two screencasts, so if you haven't had a chance to do that, you may want to go back and take a look at those. Uh, but otherwise, you would just click right here to set it up in Profile Manager. Uh, one one of the things you'll want to be aware of is the fact that we're not running DNS and so it may say at the top if you've changed your uh, server name to a remote name that you've set up uh, as I showed you earlier uh, with your domain provider it may not work on your local network uh, to do that because it's not looking for DNS uh, in itself because we don't have DNS set up so it may be your local name that you would put here you know like mac.local instead of the uh, .com uh, when you're on your own network so just wanted to point that out just in case there's a little confusion if it tries to go there it may say hey I can't find it and that's because it's trying to do a DNS I will talk about how to do that in a future screencast if you want the DNS set up. But for right now, I just wanted to point that out in case you get stuck. Now, I've already opened uh, the Safari page and logged in. And so let's just go ahead and go right into Profile Manager here. And as you can see on the top here, it does have my local address here. So this is the Profile Manager interface, and again, it's very similar to what you see in most of Apple setups. You have uh, kind of a sidebar here that shows your library, then you have the specifics of that particular library, and then you have all the details here to the right. So what I'm going to do is just kind of give you an overview of all of these things, and then we'll dig in a little deeper into each one of them. Uh, so here at the top, we've got our apps, and so what you can do is add either enterprise uh, applications, so ones that maybe you've developed for your enterprise that you want to add in here, or ones that you've purchased through Apple's volume purchasing program. So again, if you're a business and you go in and you've purchased, uh, you know, you got an app that's going to be on every one of your devices, uh, they'll give you a discount to purchase a volume number of licenses, and then you can enroll those apps and books and things right in here, and then have those things added to the devices that you have in Profile Manager with the profile that'll be added to those devices. So this is where you would do that. I'm not going to go into depth on that because I don't have one of these set up, but just wanted to show you that that's here. Uh, you can do the same thing with books right an enterprise book or the volume uh, purchase uh, for those books and so uh, same thing that we would do with applications then you have your devices and so as you can see here I've got the two invite devices that I've enrolled I've got my iPhone and a Mac mini that I've got right here and if you remember in the previous screencast, those are the two things I enrolled, one iOS device and one Mac device. We'll go into details on those. And then I've got device groups, and so I can set up a group of devices. And so a good thing to do here might be to group them by uh, type, like maybe iOS or Mac. I'm going to go into more details on how to do that uh, in a future screencast, but just wanted to show you that that's here. Then we have our users, and so you can see here I've got a couple of users on here. Um, based on the users that I have on my Mac. Uh, again, I don't have an open directory set up, so I only have my local uh, users in here. Uh, but if I did an open directory, which I'll show you uh, in a future screencast, I can have more people there. Or I can just keep adding users onto my Mac if I wanted to do that and have those separate on here. Then I've got groups that I can set up for those users. And so I have some uh, settings that I can do for them. And then we've also got classes here where I can add a class. If I'm using the Apple Classroom application and software, uh, I can come in here and click on Add a Class. I can name the class. And then I can put information about that class in terms of a description, uh, who the instructors are, and I would add them from the users area over here, as well as students, which I would add from there as well. And then I also would add any shared iPad groups. So in case I'm sharing an iPad for a classroom among different users, then I could add those share iPad groups in here as well. Again, to get access to that software, uh, you have to be a school, and you have to go through a whole approval process. So I don't have that because I'm not a school, so I can't show you how that works, but just wanted to show you that that was right here. So what I'm going to do is let's just kind of come up here and let's uh, delete this, which you can do at any time, and then it puts us back to the beginning. Now down here in the activity section, I can look at any active tasks that might be happening or any completed tasks. And as you can see here, I had an update uh, there. I've got my enrollment of my Mac Mini right here and the enrollment of my iPhone. And so it will track when those things were enrolled and when they were last updated so that you can see any activity. And if there's any active tasks there, you can see where they get stuck if they don't get completed. 
and go in and fix them if you want to do that. Uh, so that gives you an idea of the entire sidebar. Uh, let's go into the devices area and let's just walk through some of the details that are in here because it's really nice to have these things available. Uh, what you'll notice is I've got this about screen. And so again, I can access this anywhere on the internet as long as I've got a registered domain name that's pointing back to my server's public IP address. Uh, or if I use the public IP address itself and I've opened the appropriate ports, I can come in here and get information about my iPhone. So for instance, if I just uh, click here on general, it shows me the type uh, of item I have, how much capacity it has, what my software version is, and then it gives me the build as well as the serial number information, who the user is and whether it's supervised or not, uh, or whether it's shared. So again, just a really nice feature. If I need to look up a serial number quickly, I can do that from here. Uh, I've also got other details about the device, and so this is where I have all this information like phone number, uh, the, the UDID information, the Wi-Fi MAC address, the Bluetooth MAC address. You can see all the information that's in here, as well as available capacity. So what I've used and uh, the last check-in time and then what my remaining battery life is. So again, at a glance, I get that information. I've got information on security, so it tells me about the encryption that's being used, um, whether it's passcode compliant. Uh, again, the, the what if the passcode is present, if I require it uh, when it's configured, uh, the um, automatic uh, uh, activation lock being enabled or not. So you can see all the information that's on it. It tells me how it's set up. Um, is close that. I can also set up restrictions. So any restrictions that I have set up on this device would be here. Uh, any installed apps. So I can see all of the apps that are installed on this particular iPhone. And that'll be true for the Mac as well. So it's really neat that it reads all of those applications. And then I've got any groups that it's in. And again, I haven't created any groups, so it's not in any. Uh, I've got uh, any um, information on built-in app or assisted system data file or security updates. I don't have any of those right now, but those would show here. And then, of course, the certificate. And this was the certificate that I added to the iPhone, uh, the trust certificate, so that it would connect to Profile Manager. Let's go ahead and close that down. Then over here, I can get into settings, and right here I've got my settings, uh, and this is a profile right here that I can go in and edit, and I'll show you that in a second. And then we can also do uh, any enrollment settings. Uh, again, things for activation lock, whether it's a supervised uh, device. If it is, then I can choose to allow the lock or allow the lock uh, only if the bypass code is available. And then I can set a device name if it's a supervised device. And again, a supervised device means that I have control of it through the profiles the individual does not. Uh, so those are the settings there. Then these would be any of the apps that I've added using the app information up here in the library, any books using the book area over here, and then it shows the activity here as well per device. And you can see that's when I enrolled the device and that it's successful in when it enrolled, including the time. Uh, so again, that happens for all of my devices. If I just uh, come uh, over to the about, I'm just going to go into... Uh, users here for a minute because I want to show you how to set some restrictions based on users. So this is how the devices work. If I come over here to users, what I want to show you is the different restrictions and settings in here. In fact, let me just come over here to myself. And what you can see here is I've got information on the account name, where it's located, and then in here I've got restrictions that I could change. And so uh, right now I've got all of these just set the way that they are. But if you'll notice, I can allow access to my device's portal. So I can uncheck that uh, once I authenticate. I can go in and, and uncheck that so that no one, this person or this user can't go and enroll any devices. So if I'm doing those by hand and I don't want a user to go in and do it, I can remove access to that portal so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, I can allow access but then have some restrictions here. You know, uh, only allow access to the configuration profile downloads, I can choose to allow a device enrollment or unenrollment one way or the other. So if you don't want, let's say, a child or somebody to remove a certificate or to enroll or not enroll, you would uh, uncheck that box so they wouldn't have access. Uh, again, I can allow device lock, uh, the password to be cleared uh, one way or the other. I can, again, uncheck that if I don't want that to happen. Uh, or, I mean, check it to have, to have a restriction. And then allow device wipe. I can choose to allow it or not allow it, depending on if that box is checked. Then down here, I can allow enrollment during uh, setup assistant for devices that are using the enrollment program. So if I have a device that I have enrolled in my company, when the person gets the device out of the box, it could automatically set up the profile that I have on it. So it loads all of their information like their email information and Wi-Fi and all of that. It's a, a really neat thing to be able to set up. 
And then I can allow uh, enrollment during a setup assistant for devices configured using Apple Configurator. So if I'm using Apple Configurator, I can do that as well. And I'll show you how to use that uh, a little bit later in our series here. And then I can restrict enrollment to placeholder devices. And what that means is I can create a placeholder for a device that is all set and ready to go so that when that device comes online, then it will connect it to Profile Manager automatically by looking at uh, the actual uh, address that it's got, uh, the MAC address. And then I can also restrict enrollment to unassigned devices. Anytime if I want to learn about restrictions, I can click on this and it will give me more information. Uh, down here I can see what groups that I'm in. You can see I'm in the Everyone group and the Administrators group. And then again, this has all my uh, any built-in updates and things that I may have. And you can see I don't have any set right there. So those would be the restrictions. Again, if I just go through, I've got settings. Here's my profile again with uh, some enrollment settings if I want to set those up. And then I've got my apps, books, and then devices, any devices assigned to me. You can see that both of these are assigned to me. And then the activity that I might have personally as a user. So that gives you an idea of the interface for Profile Manager. Uh, as you can see, there's a number of things that you can do with it. What I'm going to do in the next screencast is we'll go into a little bit more detail on how to manage uh, by user and then by device. And we'll take a look at all of the things that are available to manage using the profiles through Profile Manager. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.